Flatiron, at the bottom of the system, has three generators like Estes, but produces 60% more power. And remember, one of the generators can be reversed to pump water into Carter Lake. You bet, Jerry. Hello, Grandly. The CBT is a complex Ooh, system, and okay. I suppose we could call this dispatch room here at Flatiron the brain. We keep track of all power demands here and, of course, release the proper amounts of water to the reservoirs for delivery to the farmers. This dispatching center not only controls the Colorado Big Thompson, but also the Bighorn and North Platte systems in Wyoming. We'll never run short of water energy, I said, and that's true. But to have the right amount of water in the right reservoir at the right time, well, we're rather like jugglers. You remember the three gigantic reservoirs we have, Granby on the west, and on the east, Horsetooth and Carter. Now, we can release water from Granby any time we wish and in any amount. But releases from Horsetooth and Carter are regulated through demand during the growing season. In an average year, the water levels are about like this in October, the start of the winter power operation. From October until April, the water is put to work producing great quantities of electric power. From April till mid-July, the big reservoir must be filled again. This is the water accumulation period. From July until October, the growing and maturing crops demand more and more water. By October, the storage system has completed the cycle. By spring, we know how much space we have in the reservoirs. We know the depth of the new snowpack and how much water it holds. But we don't know how fast the snow will melt, whether the year will be a wet one or a dry one, how much water the farmers will need, and how much power the users will need. Well, I must say we juggle all of these things pretty well. We here at the Water Conservancy District represent the farmers and the other water users. We're responsible for maintaining and updating our part of the system, seeing to it that proper water releases are made, adjusting water allocations and the like. Over the years, we'll pay the government 20% of the cost of the project. The sale of electricity pays the other 80%. In the end, the CBT will not have cost the public a dime and will return additional revenue to the federal government. Let me show you something. The green area represents the Conservancy District, about a million and a half acres of beautiful farmland. Do you know that the value of the crops each year is more than the cost of the CBT project? Horsetooth and Carter are banks. The money is water. It's a savings account that's never overdrawn. We see to that. Through a system of waterways, we supplement the natural sources. The Poudre River, and north of it. The South Platte, the Big Thompson. Water is sold to cities and towns. Estes Park, Greeley, Fort Collins, Loveland. And out of Carter Lake, we send water south to Boulder and Longmont. Take a closer look at how this water is used and what it does to serve agricultural, industrial, domestic, and community needs. Without Colorado Big Thompson water, there could be no predictable irrigation to ensure lush crops of vegetables, sugar beets, corn, and barley. Without Colorado Big Thompson water, there would not be alfalfa, silage, and water enough to support the area's $300 million livestock and poultry business. Nor would there be the spin-off of farmers' income to other businesses. Water from the CBT sold to communities provides for individual needs. It guarantees also the water necessary for all kinds of processes. And the power from the project not only lights the homes, but runs the appliances. 
and makes the machinery go in some of the area's largest industries. In fact, Hewlett Packard, IBM, Eastman Kodak, and other industries with the income they generate might have located elsewhere were it not for the water and electric plug-in provided through the Colorado Big Thompson project. I used to worry a lot about that project. I'm Professor Belden. I retired a while ago. Used to teach botany, forestry, and the like. Nowadays, they'd probably call me uh, an ecologist or an environmentalist. Well, it really doesn't matter. I have always done my very best to hold on to the natural beauty of this whole area. That's why I kept my eye on the Colorado Big Thompson project from the beginning. Well, CBT improved on old mother nature. It really did. Look, here I am fishing the Colorado below Lake Granby, a guaranteed steady flow of water. Before, it wasn't like that at all. You see, now there's always enough water released to make the stream better than natural for fishing. Look, let me show you something else. Perhaps some places should be left in their natural, undisturbed state. But I must say that often man is kinder to nature and the other way around. When man works with nature as a partner, the combination is unbeatable. A case in point. This is Grand Lake, as natural as can be. It's been there for ages. And this is Shadow Mountain Lake. This is man-made. It's only been there a few years. If you didn't know, could you tell which is natural? We enjoy much more beauty and a lot more water. And I think that's good for everybody.
And so it continues. Nature's white winter gift combines with man's work, refuting Major Long's prediction that this land would always be a great American desert, ensuring instead a perpetual cornucopia of sparkling water, of needed power, of luxuriant crops, a green echo of snow. <laughs>